All right, and welcome to the Inside All Day podcast, where today it's not Boris and Doris. <laughs> You're being joined, as always, by, well, myself, Player 2, I'm Chris, but as always, I have my lovely wife and Player 2 of the Inside All Day podcast, not Ms. Nadia. Boris. Doris. Nice to meet you. Now, if you're wondering why we're referring <laughs> to each other as Boris and Doris, thank you for joining us today. If the title didn't give it away, we are reviewing True. Ooh, we got some glare. There we go. True Lies. This is a, yes. This is a big, big favorite of mine. This is like my go to sick movie. So uh, if you've never seen it, let me, uh, let me give you a quick breakdown. Arnold Schwarzenegger's special agent, Harry Tasker. Although to his wife, Helen, played by Jamie Lee Curtis. He's just a boring computer salesman. When Harry's two lives unexpectedly collide, both he and Helen find themselves in the clutches of international terrorists fighting to save not only their marriage, but their lives. Directed by James Cameron and crammed with incredible special effects, True Lies is an exhilarating mix-up of nonstop action and romantic comedy. 1994. Can I see that? Absolutely. I just got a little noticed. grenade with a. That's with a what I just ring. noticed on the front of it too. <laughs> the little grenade with the wedding ring. Mm -hmm. That's cute. <laughs> oh man! And we watched it uh, first. I watched for me. This though. is yeah, the first watch for you. And this but is, we watched it, it from the DVD. I don't know where I'm at. I, yeah, I've seen it a and lot. And it was like this small on the screen. <laughs> oh, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, we finally because we finally got our. Well, we've had it for about a year now, but a 4K TV. So when it formatted to it, it had to make it teeny tiny, tiny little TV. But it was, it was fine. It held up. Well, not only was it fine, it was kind of interesting to see the the old format to see how the cameras really kind of compare. I don't know, something about the way when it reformatted kind of really drew me back into just the difference in technology, hmm. I guess I would say. You can just kind of see it how it's filmed. Yeah, definitely so. a James Cameron movie <laughs> from the shots. <laughs> hey, fair enough. He's not he's not my favorite, but this is one place where I will... Uh, I mean, I, I watched Titanic over and over. I'm really surprised i've never seen this movie yeah this is something that like your dad would love why because there's the bad men are arabs what wow that's no <laughs> why does he's, he does he's he arab? Arab? does he know anything? no just because no. your, your dad's oh, an yeah, action I film guy four times you asked me in no, no 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 <laughs> that's not fair i only made two jokes asking me if my dad knew these the guys one guy <laughs> that's not fair the one guy looked like the one guy looked like Mansoor. that <laughs> is uncle. not fair uh, what are you saying, Chris? You, we all look alike? No, I'm saying him and that one. Act, I mean, it was a much younger man. So for all I know, it could have been Mansoor. <laughs> My family were yeah. uh, guest spots. Yeah, yeah I'm very not? surprised. So I know of the Jamie Lee Curtis, like sexy mm -hmm. dance scene because it's been memed. The, the dopey sexy dance scene. Yeah. Uh, but I've, and I think I've seen like, pit, like certain spots in the movie, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen the movie in full. I didn't realize it's more of a, to me, it's more of a comedy than an action movie. I think it is very representative of a 1994 action film. Okay. Fair because enough. I think it, it's got a lot of those kind of 90s cliches you've come to expect and or love. Do you know what I loved about it? Mm. We didn't have to have the subtitles on. People actually spoke into Oh, because the, because the sound was all done at the yeah, one level. Yeah. Yes. You could actually under <laughs> even Arnold, you could understand what he was I, saying. I didn't even I didn't even consider that because you were not a uh you're, I'm you're, a you're a big, sub, gal. big subtitle fan and well because uh, nowadays they don't uh, they used to have it where everybody was on a mic mm -hmm. speak speaking clearly or they would go to the studio afterwards and you know, you know do a little voiceover work. Yeah. But Nowadays, directors just want people to talk at whatever levels they want the character to be. And if they're mumbling, half the time mm. I feel people are mumbling on screen. So well, those I have specialty. to have the, which sucks because sometimes subtitles give away the plot. Mm -hmm. or, That's why I hate it. I know. We are, we are a, <laughs> we are a household at odds. Let us know in those comments like down below, invincible by the way. yesterday. Yes. <laughs> if you, by any chance, are you, are you a subtitle user? Do you have a spouse or a beloved other or a friend that's a subtitle user that is suffering and needs help? <laughs> Let us know in those comments <laughs> down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We haven't said that yet. That's As true. always, there's also the notification bell. So that way, when you are subscribed, you're going to get every single notification when we get that new content right there available for you. So, uh, yeah, sorry. That, that, that quick little aside aside there, Doris. Yes, Boris. We're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. So, I mean, how do, 
It, it, it's a heck of a start. It, it starts. It's a James. It, it's so, a James Bond opener, kind of. I can't say that because Skyfall is the only James Bond movie I've ever seen. I thought you saw Casino Royale too. No, we didn't oh. get to see. Well, I saw Casino Royale. Well, maybe you, but we it, own Casino Royale. How people describe James Bond, I can mm. kind of see this as a this James feels Bond a little more style Pierce movie. Brosnan-y. I mean, you've never what seen are you it. Talking I'm, about? I'm, I'm, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking oh. to them. Oh, okay. It's a little more Pierce Brosnan. You, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Have you lost weight? You look excellent. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the part in the opening where obviously the sh- it's a James Cameron. You can tell by how it's shot. But where they go a close up onto the gate. Mm-hmm. But then it it uh, cuts to him being underwater on what? the gate. James and Cameron opening. doesn't do underwater things. Yeah. <laughs> He's known for aerial footage exclusively. That we'll get to that as well. There's, <laughs> right. right, right, yeah. So the whole movie, uh, like I said, you know, gotta 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 find her, find her terrorists first. So it opens with Arnold Harry Schwarzenegger, Tasker, Arnold Schwarzenegger, breaking into a party. Yes, and uh, speaking very good Arab. Yes, Arabic. In fact, sorry. if you yes, in fact, if you read the subtitles they put up for the Arabic, it literally says in perfect Arabic what he says. He says. <laughs> So I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't perfect Arabic, but if it was, hey. It sounded pretty good. So you know better than me. It's interesting because I at least understood the swear words in this movie. <laughs> I understood the hurry up, hurry up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the terrorists are like, move it, move yeah. it. I'm like, let's oh, go, hey, let's I go. knew that one. Imshi, imshi. <laughs> imshi, imshi. Uh, yes, he... So he comes in in the wets. So we cut, cuts in through the gate. He comes up under this guy's underwater And of course, he, he doesn't get his tux wet. No, he had the, he had the wetsuit the, on. They made an interesting sound during when he was taking off the mm-hmm. top of it. You could hear like the... It was like a pressure release or yeah, something? Yeah, like a wet pressure. I don't want to do it because we're going to mean the <laughs> yeah, shit out of it. Please, but you know don't. what I mean? <laughs> PG-13. PG-13. Yes, yes, like a wet... Like it, it was very interesting. I was listening to the sound effects throughout this movie and there's a... Couple well, pretty it's cool clearly a spy moments. technology because not a single crease in that suit that's not supposed to be there. That's true too. I understand it's under his suit, mm-hmm. so that's may, okay. Maybe water won't spy get into technology. it. Spy technology mm-hmm. in the nineties. Yeah. Well, they were using floppy disks. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Hey, listen, cool. that was the height of technology. I know. I know. It's Zip interesting. Discs. Our kids. Who our, it? our kids Zip are going to be like, discs. "What the heck is this? What is this alien technology? Yeah. <laughs> why did you? Th- why did you? Uh, why did you three D print a uh, save icon? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So okay. So he's at the party. We're, we're so, yeah, getting off track. We're, we're getting way off track. He's and at the party. Hands. He he's making his way. You know. Yep. He's got to find his. He's like target. going over and going like, "Hey, nice yeah. to meet you, Je- give me your oh, hand. Oh, we're doing nice that. to meet, meet you, General. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to see you again." Yeah. And everybody, have you lost weight? And the confidence, and everybody's like, "Yeah, you know, it's been a long time." And they're like, "Who the fuck Who's is this that guy?" guy? Oh. Ah. So he goes to uh, ID the the host who's. Potentially even doing some shady dealings when he runs into, was it Juno Skinner? Yeah. And, I yep. And she is going to be Juno uh, Skinner. Yeah. Yeah. And she is going to be a kind of, well, kind of in the beginning, she's a love interest, right? I mean, it comes off of that, the way the opening of this movie is. Because obviously we don't know yet about his family, right? So Mm -hmm. it just comes Mm -hmm. off as like a, a spy espionage type of, you know, movie where you have the hot, chick and played by Tia Carrera by the way yes in there so yes it comes off like that she doesn't come off as a villain Mm -hmm. she just comes off as you know Arnold's probably gonna get laid Mm -hmm. yeah a little bit yeah like you said we don't know what's going on we don't there's a family back at home so they end up uh flirting he kind of steals some information he ends up coming back down and the guards are suspicious of him so can I mention one part when he's in the building Either he's going to the room. He's climbing outside with his bare hands. He was climbing a drain pipe. In the middle of wind. Yeah, yeah. okay. Okay. All right. It's the 90s. It's, I got it. What? I also like the fact that when he's flirting with uh, Skinner, she pulls mm-hmm. out a card out of her her. Oh, box. she has the 90s. Like, <laughs> Here you go. Like, it's not going to be sweaty. And like, sorry, it's, this is a little warm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But, but yeah, but then, uh, but he, so he's being kind of not chased by the guards yet, but pursued by the guards. They think he's suspicious. So in order to avoid detection, of course, like, classically, he has to do the tango. <laughs> because how do you perfectly hide other than by doing the I most the tango. devastating yes. tango you've ever seen on the dance floor? He's Way to not good draw at attention. It. Was it him or was it a stunt double? You don't even know. Yeah, no, no, no. yeah there's a, quite a few times I'm like, 
That's a dude in a wig. <laughs> well, yeah, I can't tell if it's a wig or just the worst haircut. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> not Arnold's the the sword, the stunt mm-hmm. guy. But yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. So they he does they do a long tango session. Meanwhile, you've got uh, his partners in his ears, played by Tom Arnold and ooh the other gentleman whose name is escaping me. But he was like the the new gentleman to the team. You pulling this one up for me? Uh, Perfect. She's looking Grant. At, and I'll keep talking. Peslov, I believe. There you go. Yes. I'm gonna say yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody said this prepared. is one of their favorite Tom Arnold movies. Yeah. Oh, Tom Arnold is to me one of the best, best parts of this movie. He is the comic relief at every turn. Uh, one of my favorite little like trivia facts about this movie. Okay. Well, you know, I, hold on. I'm gonna save it till when it's more appropriate to the point in the story. I'm okay. Getting, I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm excited. All right. So he's on his way out. He's escaping this mansion party. Right. Guards are on to him. He lets off an explosion. Freaking takes two Doberman heads oh, and yeah. just goes. Dink. But he, but he specifically he didn't, kill him. he doesn't kill him. He doesn't hurt him. They he get not, back up and they yeah, walk away. Yeah, obviously because they respect gonna... him for it. Yes, sure. <laughs> okay. And now we go from so, so we go from yeah to the chase scene. Yeah, t- guys in tuxes with machine guns to guys on ski machines yeah, and all right white here. ski bad guys. <laughs> ski I also bad wrote guys. Amazing nineties action score. I also wrote stuntman falling down the so- when he yeah. Rolls there's a couple down. great. Great part, so you can definitely tell it's not Arnold and it's a stunt man. And so the the easiest one is towards the end. There's a part where he's sliding on his back down a snowy mountain, and he two guys are skiing at him as he shoots them from his back, sliding down the mountain. Mm-hmm. So uh, sorry, Arnold. I know that one wasn't you. Broke my heart, but uh, credit to your stunt double. I wonder how many stunts he's actually done in his life. I wonder at what point he probably like ramped up. Yeah. So the question then, is, at what point did he go? I'm not doing, doing this anymore. <laughs> GTFO. And then here's Tom Cruise, probably going to be doing stunts until he's like 90 years old. I told you, Tom Cruise's goal is to die on the set of Mission Impossible. You think so? Thousand percent. Tom's going to like skydive out of a plane and then he's going to pull the thing and it's just going to be like magician's handkerchiefs. (laughs) And where he lands, there's going to be like a little shot glass full of water and he's going to be like a little note in his pocket. I almost made it. Like that. See? That's how Tom Cruise. That's, a- that's how Tom Cruise. That's how Tom Cruise is going to want to go mm-hmm. extreme. I, I mean, maybe doing your own stunts, man, probably keeps him young, though. Oh, I mean, for sure, you got you got to stay fit. Schwarzenegger's still lifting. He's got. Yeah, I haven't seen his new show, but you know, he's got a show going on right now. Uh, Fubar. Yeah, Fubar. Yes, so, yes. <laughs> like how you rolled that for zero reason. Fubar. <laughs> So speaking of FUBAR, let's talk about this movie some more. So. Yes. Okay. So we have this big opening action scene and we're thinking mm-hmm. this is going to be like, well, I'm thinking. Dances, guards, action, yeah. escape. And then we cut to his family. Yep. And he's, where he has his standard office job as a computer salesman. Yes. Sounds like he's selling, Who goes like, to Sweden to sell yes. things. Well, and it's so exciting for him. It's kind of like actually like in Mission Impossible when he's meeting his uh, fiance's friends and family. Oh, and he's like, right. oh, yes. I am a, was like a, tra- he was like a traffic scientist or yeah. something. <laughs> it's like so the exact same stupid. thing. I can just say nonsense and you're not going to care. You yeah. Don't care about what I'm talking about. And like how he didn't even care about a $600 plumbing fee. And- oh, he just wasn't. It's because he was, he was ignoring his wife. Yeah. He just wasn't listening. $600 for a plumbing job done? Well, hold on. Back that in the 90s. That was $600 and they had to go under the slab. I know. We have friends here who had. Uh, issues they had to go under the slab here, remember? Oh, yeah, but it's so different here, and they had to do all that cutting. You know, yeah, really and, and we're talking about like tens of thousands mm-hmm. of dollars. It was a lot of fun for them. $600 for a guy to come uh, fix my plumbing? Sure, why not? Right. And offering to sleep well, he with doesn't, him? Well, he doesn't worry about it, though. <laughs> I know, he's ignoring his wife. Well, well, he doesn't worry about it because he's not really the computer guy. We know he's the spy. I wrote down here to make sure we didn't forget he works for Omega Sector. Last line of defense. You say this, but there's a scene later on in the movie where he's saying that he, on his salary, he can't afford a suite at the Marriott. Mm-hmm. So, well, that was like hella sweet, though. Had I a know. Fireplace. You think that you think they trust people at a fireplace these days? What do you think that suite was back then? Back then, oh, I have no idea. I'm, Maybe I, a grand. Sure. Maybe. I'm just gonna say yes because probably I probably no not. Idea. I don't know how inflation works. Anyway. <laughs> Come to Natty for all your uh, financial news. <laughs> no, I don't know please how don't. Works. Let's do this. Um, so, you know, so he's back. He's with it, his family. He's pretending he's back to pretending he's Harry Tasker from Harry Rehnquist. We skipped that where he had uh, his little fake identity when right. he was at the party. 
And his daughter stealing money out of stealing. Yep, Tom, from Tom Arnold, who just assumed that the money was being stolen by his cheating ex-wife, dirtbag boyfriend, who's living. Who's they're all li- living who's, together. They're all living together. Yep. Yeah. Because Tom Arnold. Yes. And so they, uh, yeah, they end up, uh, you know, doing the research on the party house. They find out that he's been, you know, potentially working to get some nukes into country. There were some, I believe, they were Soviet nukes at the time. <laughs> And uh, it was four of them. And hey, wouldn't you know it? That pretty lady he was talking to at the party just happens to be dealing. An art dealer. An art dealer. Yeah, mm-hmm. happens to be dealing art with that gentleman as well. Maybe they should set up an appointment. They do. And he goes out to speak with Juno Skinner, who, wouldn't you know, it just happens to be right in town. Yep. So he goes. He's flirting with Juno. We finally get to see the big, bad, evil guys. She's kind of taking him through the tour. It's kind of cool because... You've got a bunch of guys who are just like sitting around these like crates of antiquities and there's kind of like not working and you don't kind of like, you wouldn't like think about it at first. Oh, it's just guys just, you know, it's just, it's just service guys being lazy. Whatever, yeah, that's, right? it was an interesting, it's a little detail you wouldn't catch. The you first wouldn't time. have catch. And then t- to turn out that this is the big baddie for the, mm-hmm. that's a really good. You end up finding out that, yeah, one of the guys in there is the big baddie kind of mm-hmm. does his first like little appearance. He like peeks out from behind a statue. I should have brought the mic with me. Peeks out from behind the statue. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I mean, I would be a villain too if I had that haircut or that hairline. Yeah. Unfortunately, he, he's a scary individual, but unfortunately, he like that hairline. Well, he, he, <laughs> listen, he grows more hair than I do, so I can't, I can't throw any shade. Listen, if, if your hairline is, yeah, he is way above he was, your he was forehead. At the half, yeah. He was at the half, past the halfway point. Bruce Willis, it, man. But, and his hair was down to here. I mean, he was shoulder length. I know, but just if, do a comb over or just, no. No if you're over. losing your hair, just cut it, yeah, man. Yeah, gentlemen. Gentlemen, as, as uh, someone who's lost their hair, just everybody knows. Grateful. Everybody knows. Just get over it. Cut your hair. Do it. You're going to feel so much better. It's going to save you time and money. And uh, you need to be more confident about it. Yeah. I've got your back. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I also like the fact that it's, so he, he meets with this art dealer. He's trying to, you know, get some a little bit more information of what's mm-hmm. going on. He leaves, and then we're introduced that this guy is oh, a big baddie. Miss Skinner, may I have a word with you? And That's a really like good really, act. And he's <laughs> like really, really like bad. meek and quiet. And, and he goes, yeah, sorry, Charmuta! Really bad. Yeah. <laughs> and Charmuta means lady of the night in a very derogatory way in Arabic, just so you know. And which is really funny because it reminded me of the time that my sister was trying to order shawarma, which is food. It's mm-hmm. like gyro. I guess gyro would well, be the like, yeah, closest. Like gyro. Yeah. And she called it charbuta. <laughs> Me and my yeah. dad were like, I don't think that's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, my question is, do they, do they take our order or not? They did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my sister's paler than me. so <laughs> One lady of the night coming right up. Yes. I also like the fact that in this movie, everybody's smoking indoors. Yes. That was literally the next note I was just about to talk about. Everybody's just lighting up a cigarette. All over the place. Like, wow, this movie feels so 90s. This is great because there's people smoking in offices. There's people smoking in probably restaurants. Most importantly, there's people smoking in malls, which is, we kind of, you know, you have vapors these days, but. Yeah. Smoking in malls. I mean, when was the last time you even, do you even remember seeing someone smoke in a mall? It's we would have been children. I grew up with a a parent that smoked, but I personally don't like cigarettes. But the smell sometimes, it's just like a... It's nostalgia. It kind of yeah. it, it triggers the, the old memory banks. Yeah. So the, so we head to the mall. <laughs> yes. So he... Because he he's le- being followed. Yes. So he leaves Skinner's office. The terrorist has yelled at uh, Skinner for laughing and flirting like a lady of the night. Shadamuta. Shadamuta. It's and, okay. You uh, can say it. Yep. You're well, allowed. You can, no, you're allowed. I'll give you your Arab card. Thanks. I appreciate you're it. Welcome. I'm not going to cash that in. You can hold on to that for me. Okay. Um... <clears throat> So he, you know, they, they send a task force after Harry on the way out to trail him. And they realize they're being trailed. It's Harry and Tom Arnold's character, whose name is escaping me. And you, I thought this was your favorite movie. It Albert. is Albert. Listen, no, it, it, he's, he's playing Tom Arnold the entire time. It, that's true. I mean, Tom Arnold is his character in this film. And sidebar right now, uh, Harry's trying to get home because it's his mm. birthday and yes, celebrate it was a birthday, birthday with, celebration. with his right. wife and daughter. I'll be right. I'll be right home. Gotta, I'll be on time. I'll be yeah, on time. Yeah, yeah. Quick errand. We, we've all been there. We've all been there. Yeah, but now he's being tailed by these villains and they end up pulling over to a mall. And he's very confident, very cocky, mm-hmm. I would say. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you, you've seen, at this point, you've seen the entire movie. You know why he's so cocky. He's Harry Tasker. Is there anything? So he, he is he, the James is, Bond. Is there no task he, the Tasker cannot task? So is he J- the American James Bond or is uh, Ethan uh, the American James Bond? Ethan Hunt would probably be the American, closer to the American James Bond. It's kind of different. You might even, I mean, you, you end up getting like a, like a bunch of different like subcategories of mm-hmm. spy, right? Because you haven't seen Jason Bourne. To me, Jason Bourne's like, he's like more assassin You got Ethan Hunt, who's more like a thief. Okay. Right? He's more like kind of like a master planner. And then you got James Bond, who's like the cocky master spy. Okay. And so he... So there's like, it's... It's, it's kind of... Just takes take a little it, bit from everything. It, nailed it. Okay. Got it in one. So we come up to your favorite, one of your favorite scenes, the bathroom scene. The bad one, that makes it sound interesting. Well, that's what you said while we were watching it. I did. But you're like, you know what's a really interesting scene? Bathroom the bathroom scene, scene. <laughs> uh, where he tails him into the bathroom. Yes. So he knows he's being tailed and he, so he wants to get a closer look at these guys. So he gets him to, gets out of the car and gets him to follow him into the mall. And then he goes to the bathroom. They follow him in there and it is the precursor to the mission impossible bathroom fight scene. Really? I don't know. I kind of like Henry Cavill. Well, you, cause you just like Henry Cavill. That's true. Come on, leave your part. You ready? Doesn't do it, baby. Hey, I'm I, sorry. Well, yeah. I, yeah, my, my arms are about, what, one-eighth the size of his, <laughs> especially in that movie. Goodness gracious. I like don't know. I haven't Greek measured God. yet. What? <laughs> so he's fighting in the bathroom. So, so they do, they do, yeah, so, they do a whole, so they're doing a whole bathroom fight. It's really cool. There's, you know, he's using one of his spy gadgets, which we totally skipped on earlier, which was a pack of cigarettes with a camera in it. He's right. got the glasses. It's this really cool scene where he, like, walks in. He's using the urinal, but he had already set up the camera behind him. And so one guy goes to sneak up behind him and shoot him in the head. And he, of course, just slips it because you can see it in the camera. And then this epic fight ensues, which has the added 90s hilarity of there being an old white guy on the toilet stuck in one of the stalls during this life or death fight involving gunfire and straight razors. And Didn't didn't they shoot the stalls? Didn't they hit his stall? Yes, they like shot over him. Listen, this poor guy. He, he's the perfect place to shit himself. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> oh my god! And he just comes up scuffling the, out. The the best part, exactly. The end of the end of the fight. Everybody's out of the room. You've got bullet holes everywhere, broken tiles, broken. I think Arnold even apologizes. Yeah, Arnold apologizes to everyone throughout this entire movie. It's it's like a running gag. It's great. And you just have this old guy who's got like his newspaper in a public mall bathroom as he just kind of shuffles out. And his pants at his ankles and just sticks his head out like it's over. <laughs> peak, peak 90s humor right there. That's true. I also like the fact that we lead into the uh, Arnold chasing the big baddie out on a horse outside the mall. No. But we also get uh, Tom Arnold being saved by the grace of God standing in front of a pole. I forgot to write that part. <laughs> like one third the size of him <laughs> being a, shot at. It's literally, it's literally a lamppost. It's like this, this thick big. around. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, just, just the <laughs> checks the, the down low and he's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> it's a very, very 90s action comedy section right there. Now, when you saw the big bad evil guy, this is your first time watching yeah. it. And you saw him grab the motorcycle. Did you just assume he was going to grab a motorcycle? Uh, uh, horse? No, a Harry. Oh, him? Harry Tasker. Assume did you assume that, yeah. that Arnold's going to grab a horse? I did not see a horse come in the way. No. Did he grab a motorcycle? And the horse in the elevator. Just, like, so well, hold on. Stupid. You're skipping one of the best jokes it's of the so whole stupid. movie, which Go is ahead. when he's in pursuit through the park and Tom Arnold's trying to catch up to him. And he says, he was like, he was t- trying to give him, like, oh, you know, we're over here and. Can you hurry up? My horse is getting tired. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so they do a horse chase through the city and he gets, they end up going through, running through a Marriott, which is a pretty cool sequence because they're running a motorcycle and a horse in and out through the Marriott. They end up in a face off at the elevators and then not. Do you think even, they actually put a horse in the yes, elevator? I fully believe they put a horse in. Well, I don't know about, I don't know about in an elevator, but they definitely filmed it in an enclosed space with a real oh. horse. Man, but I thought that was one of your that was one of your most incredulous favorite parts of the movie, right? The next part, uh, when they get to the top of the Marriott and the guy goes off with his motorcycle off the cliff, and Arnold's gonna try to follow after him with this horse Whoa, and the you, horse. But I thought you liked the part where he's actually stuck. Oh, when he's and you actually around. have the face off as they're 
as they're racing. Yes, and to they're the just looking at each building. other. Yes. Yes, intense and, stare off. And then we get to that scene where I was talking. Uh, there's, well, there's the old lady and the man that are sharing the elevator. Oh with man, him. that horse must have smelled. Oh, I'm sure that horse Being smelled that close awful. To, yeah, Harold, say something. It's interesting. That's a People think fine animal. Automatically, horses are like the most gentle, nice. No, <laughs> you got to. No. You have to earn. Wild horses, horses are dangerous. Mm-hmm. You have to earn a horse's trust. Yeah. All right. So can we go back to what I was just? Yeah. Saying? Sorry, yes. I cut you off a couple times because I want to get back to that. Please, so we get continue. to the top of the Marriott. Guy goes over the our big baddie survives going over the cliff. Arnold's getting ready. He's like, okay. Well, he like jumps it like over the street and lands in a pool in like a lower building. Yes. And Arnold thinks this horse is going to do the same exact thing as this motorcycle. At this point, I've seen the movie so many times. I'm not even watching the movie. I'm watching you because so many incredulous things have already happened. I'm like, she thinks he's going to make this jump. Yeah, obviously. With the opening, obviously, I think he's going to make this jump. Mm-hmm. And the horse mm-hmm. stops right before they're about to jump over because the remember. horse is like, no way, man. Did, did it have like 90s tire screeching horse stuff? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I like also that Arnold goes at the end after he gets back up. He's talking like, to him like he's a cop. He's like, I thought you were a cop. Aren't you supposed to be a cop? <laughs> Look at me when I'm talking to you. <laughs> Look at me when you're talking to you. <laughs> we also learn around this time, too, that uh, the big bad guy's nickname is the Sand Spider. Mm-hmm. Which well, I, I love when they ask him why. I Do you remember what his answer no. was? Probably because it sounds scary. Yeah. I want to be called the sand spider. <laughs> I will call you the sand spider. Deal. Okay. So, and he's part of a big organization mm-hmm. called the, well, he was, and he kind of sectioned off to be called the Crimson Jihad. What, what are you talking about? That's what their oh, terrorist the, oh, organization the, Oh, the sand spider did? Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like he was part of a bigger terrorist mm. organization and he kind of fractioned off into his own called the Crimson Jihad. Crimson Jihad. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Back in the 90s when you can make uh, terrorist movies like this. That's true. Mm-hmm. Back back when terrorism like that was funny. So we fast forward a little bit. Arnold's getting ready to go take his wife out for lunch to kind of smooth things over because obviously he did not make it home for his birthday. Mm-hmm. And so he uh, ends up going to our office to meet her up for that lunch when he finds out. And it's interesting because you said yeah. prior to this, you said Helen kind of thinks her husband's having an affair, but I don't. I didn't pick up on that at all. I picked up on the fact that she felt abandoned and alone, mm-hmm. but I didn't pick up on the fact that um, she thought maybe I guess Harry- I, I was just kind of figured the subtext was there because when you hear, you know, the the typical, oh, my husband's always out. He's always gone on work trips on work the trips. weekends. You know what I mean? Mm, okay. It's, I feel like that's kind of like a classic TV movie indicator of potential infidelity. Okay. And then, so he's heading up to go take her to lunch, and he he stops because uh, she, her coworker, tells her she's got a call from Simon Loverboy. Mm, Lover Boy. Lover Boy. Simon. I, Simon says, which I did not realize who it was until I actually saw who <laughs> You're it was. Like, why does this voice? I was so like, familiar. this voice sounds so freaking familiar. Who the heck is this guy? So she's having an affair mm-hmm. with a guy named Simon. First of all. <laughs> Who has an affair with a guy named Simon? That is not... Jamie Lee Curtis? I guess. Duh. <laughs> Simon is not like Hashtag a sexy, Hobbies. like, ooh, you know? Mm-hmm. Like Ricardo. Like Ricardo. Yeah, you're gonna... It's like say saying, Simon. ooh, your Simon mystery says, man's on line one. It's Harvey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's Hank. Yeah. We, I don't know I'm going with H names. But I don't know. Harold. Uh, so he, so we find out that she's having this affair. And Arnold mm. at this time does too. Mm-hmm. Because he kind of and he overhears his, out. yes, overhears the whole thing. And so, like any standard individual, he decides to use the immense power that his position affords him to bug his wife's purse and <laughs> start <laughs> using national security assets to uh, see what's going on in her everyday life. Red flags. As you friend. do. Red flags. Oh, yeah. She's throwing them left and right. I don't blame him. I like how Tom Arnold's like, <laughs> it's okay, man. We've all been there. Welcome to the club. <laughs> yes. So this is one of those Tom Arnold. This is the Tom Arnold effect I wanted to get to. So there's a great line. He's talking about my second wife. Did you believe it? That crazy. Was it like that crazy bitch took all the, she took the ice cube trays from the freezer. Oh, right. What kind of crazy bit? So apparently it's actually based on a true story because he was at that time going through his divorce with Roseanne. Oh! And I guess Roseanne actually took, allegedly, according to him, the ice cube trays from the freezer so that joke is a slam at his ex-wife. 
Okay. And uh, I always thought that was a... That's interesting. What kind of cold? <laughs> Takes the ice out of the ice let, trays. Let me just immortalize this in a James Cameron movie. There you go. go. When you take the ice trays. <laughs> I also like the fact that uh, when we cut to the family again, uh, obviously now Arnold mm-hmm. knows his wife is cheating on him. She gets... Uh, he's like, oh, I was over at the office to get you for dinner. I must have missed you. And she has like... Nine layers to her lie. Well, he's also like low-key spy interrogating her. But it's like an onion. And I will have to say, women lie so well. We will create stories based on... Are you trying to tell me something? Sto- no. We Pretty will sure. create stories based on stories. We will have onion layers to our lies. Tell me about your onion. I have no onions. You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, I ran out of onions. That's, we have to pick up some the, onions. That right there is the first layer of the onion. Yes. But she lies so well. She has a backup for her backup story. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, you got you to depend on the girls at the office. It was the 90s. I know. There was a, a Sally Jesse Raphael reference in yeah, this movie. Gosh. And I was like, oh, I remember watching that as a kid. <laughs> So he's been tracking, tracing, mm-hmm. databasing, everything they're doing. Trying to find out who Simon is, and mm-hmm. we finally find out. So eventually. <laughs> so stupid. We, fi- we, we get to meet Simon. <laughs> we, we meet Simon <laughs> through the fact that uh, the per- her purse has been bugged. She's going to meet him for, uh, for a lunch. And uh, we, we're getting the audio. We don't see who it is yet. <laughs> But it seems very clear to our hero that potentially this is might be another Asian that is looking to flip. <laughs> now you can't even hold it That is looking to well, he's definitely looking to flip his wife. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> <Certain ways>. yeah. <laughs> so he's looking to flip his wife, and uh, as the camera pans can I tell up, who it is? <laughs> we get to see none other than that glorious smile that belongs to Bill Paxton <laughs> with a <the> mustache. Yeah. <laughs> I really like really bad. Oh, oh the best kind of purposely bad mustache. <laughs> and he's playing up like he's like this espionage spy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it is start starts like talking. He's talk playing to like her. he's James Bond. Yes, and in fact, he even starts <laughs> taking credit for uh, Harry's uh, right? horse chase and the guys that died. And, you know, sometimes it's just a cover for an op. I have to say this: women fall for this stuff. I'm going to speak for the majority of my species. <laughs> The mystery man, right? The, the badass, you know. This is why you can't have nice things. I know. This is why. <laughs> uh, there's a moment. I think it. I think it's when they meet up uh, in the trailer <laughs> at his hideout because mm. his penthouses were under surveillance oh, you're, oh, you're, or something. You're jumping a bunch of stuff. I know. There. I just want to mention this because I have this written: plastic wine glasses. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when they like clink. <laughs> yeah, no clink. Just tunk. Yeah. <laughs> just dull thud. Yes. Well, but, but I mean, it's it's the safe house. It's got to look the part. I'm. <laughs> Come on. So Come on. It's so fucking stupid. Got to look the part. Uh, but yes, I jumped ahead. Sorry. Before we get to the trailer, because you got to remember, you got to remember, he's he goes in. They end up finding it, trailing him after the lunch to find, find out he's out a used car, car salesman. salesman. <laughs> and so he decides to, I guess we'll call it, be, befriend him on a uh, informational op. Mm-hmm. Where he, Bill Paxton proceeds to very crassly talk about his wife and very nice, not and very not nice terms and kind of tell him what he's, how he gets, yeah, quote unquote, takes advantage of these young ladies, ladies. not long, oh. young, la- all women. Mm. He's like made up some lie about this, his espionage being, being the 007. Yes. You know, I Double love it. I, th- I think Bill Paxton's great in this. I don't want people to think I don't think, I think it's, fantastic but it's just so ridiculous the character he's playing i love it <laughs> hey when he shows up and he starts starts dropping spy game it's uh game over man uh, so <laughs> yes yes okay all right so helen is under the assumption that she's helping a co-op or a uh agent of the government or somebody to help solve some i don't fucking know you're still, you're still, you want to get In back, you want to get to that trailer so fast. I know. So, no, no, no. I was just saying, this is why she's meeting up with oh. him. She so, thinks he's like some kind of undercover agent and she is like helping him, mm-hmm. you know, by meeting up with him and stuff. Well, and then Harry finds out about it. Yes. Through some, through Intel he <laughs> gathered with illegal wiretaps and I quote, which they're doing 20 times a day. So don't tell me it can't be done. Yes. <laughs> 
So um, they find out that they're going to have a rendezvous and it's in like 15 minutes or whatever. And so they're hurrying to get to where his wife and Simon are going to meet. And so, of course, he starts pulling agents, you know, oh, you know, I need a need agents over here at this bridge. I need a tail. They end up getting a helicopter on it. The best part is when he's trying to tell her, you know, that he's trying, you know, we need to sneak you out of town. We can't be seen together. Put your head in my lap. <laughs> One of my other favorite lines <laughs> from this whole movie is when the guys who are, the guys in the car are trailing, they're like, oh, the helicopter. Uh, it, well, first, the guys in the car are like, it appears to have put her head in his lap. And then the helicopter shows up, oh, yeah, she's got her head in his lap. Yahoo. And the pilot just delivers it. She's like, Yahoo. Yahoo. And, the Tom, and the Tom, Tom Arnold falls it up. Maybe she's just sleepy. <laughs> All right, so now, so now we now they've done the pursuit. They followed him to his uh, perfectly hidden getaway because who would expect plastic cups for such a master local or spy? Yes, or a trailer park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he and, gets, he, and yeah. he wants to take Helen with him on a trip to Paris. Paris, he needs her as the perfect cover as I need his you wife. To be my wife. Yes. Yeah. Do you think those were real tickets or printed off tickets? Those were printed off tickets, like fake, like at the time. Do you think those were real tickets? Or, no. in a sense, Photoshop tickets. Uh, 1994, no. I don't even know if Photoshop existed back then, but. Well, I guess kind of game it out, right? Like, what happens? What happens if, if what happens next never happens, right? If Harry never catches him, you know, red-handed, as it were. And she goes to Paris. And she him. goes to Paris. Well, would huh. she go to Paris? Because, I mean, technically, he, he's prepping her for follow-through. Or are they fakes? And this is like a one and done. And then he just never sees her again. I feel like it would be. You know, tickets were dated though. I did look, I did see that. This let's time. practice. So we're a good, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a one and done. Hey, a reaction like that could get us killed. Yeah. Like some stupid excuse. And then he refunds the tickets. He pulls a George Costanza on it. Can't stand you. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. I think that's how it, it would be like, oh, as soon as he slept with this woman, it'd be, you know, I'll meet you at the airport. Mm -hmm. I have some things to do. I, I'll have our tickets. No worries. And she goes, and he doesn't show up. <laughs> yeah, probably. Probably something like that. But, or it's really cheap tickets to Paris, and they're going to be staying at, I don't know, really like a, a Super 8 in Paris or something. Well, yeah, but it's all part of the cover. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, well, so... You know what? I would fall for this stuff. 100%. Well, so he's pouring <laughs> cheap wine. The only mistake was that he didn't have box wine. Yeah, that's true. Box wine would have been better. So he's pouring what is presumably cheap wine into plastic cups. Trying to booze her and woo her up, and he's trying to riz her up. I guess we should be saying these days. Riz, is that what the kids are saying nowadays? Yep, he's trying to riz, riz her up. Riz, riz her up. See, we're cool. We're still hip, even though we're millennials. I'm cool. I'm hip. Yeah, I'm jiggy with it. So, uh, <laughs> no, you remember that from Austin Powers? It was Doctor Evil? I, I, I got you. <laughs> I, I, I like I like that. That right there. It's my favorite. <laughs> Nobody can see Alex shaking his head in the corner, but I can see out of the corner. <laughs> uh, so we have Arnold and his uh, mm. team. They come yes. down. They, they put on the, the balaclavas. So, They've yes. got the body armor and the MP5. They stumble across. They saw off the front section of Which his makes Bill trailer. Paxinker fall into Jamie Lee's Between legs. her legs. Yes. By the way, at this point, she's realized, I don't want to be, you know, I'm making a mistake. This is terrible. And so she's finally fended him off when, it, when this, of course, he falls in between her legs. And well, of course, he doesn't look like Henry Cavill. No, he doesn't look. Sure, doesn't look like Harry Tasker either. Yeah. So uh, yeah, then we end up getting you know the whole kidnapping scenes. We end up getting some hostage scenes. But of course, you can't uh, get through that whole takeaway scene without just a little bit more of that classic '90s humor. So as they're walking him out to the hostage van to take him away, you know, in that windowless van, she knees Tom Arnold in between the legs. And so, of course, once they get everybody like in the truck and geared away and the truck is driving off, you have the lone helicopter spotlight with Tom Arnold clutching himself like, son of a what? <laughs> like, you know, you got you to do well, the hit in the she, testicles humor. She, uh, he like back. It was one of the other guys. Hit him in the, I think it was just like one of, like, one of the guys like, on the team. Him. Yeah. They're like, oh, we got to, we got to get the, well, because they think it's like a suspect. Yeah. It's like, oh, we got to get the suspect under control. But of, but of the submachine gun. And then he just lays him out for hitting his wife. Yeah. So after that, how mad would you be if you found out that I kidnapped you 
and took you to a secret base so I can interrogate you with a speak, uh, ooh, a like, spooky decoder voice. Spooky was a hard word for me there for a second. Yeah, that would be probably lines for divorce. I'm not gonna they, lie. They, oh, that's problematic. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I will say it's interesting because you can tell in the interrogation scene, every time they mention her husband to her, mm -hmm. she lights up. Yeah. Like she smiles, she lights up. So you can actually see genuinely she loves her husband, but her husband's been ignoring her. So, you know, there's co in internal conflict, right? She not, And I don't honestly think she meant to have an affair. I really think she was she was just duped into being... Somebody who thinks she's like helping the better, like the better good. I mean, well, I, mean, I, I think he nails it at the end of that interrogation scene. It's like, she wants an adventure. I'll give her an adventure. Yeah, and that's I think what that's I think. what it was. It was when she says it too in the interrogation, when she finally breaks down, it was kind of like, you know, my husband is gone. I just dead. You know, it's kind of like a dead end job. My life is boring. Like I have so much I wanted to my do. My daughter's a brat. I didn't have it. You know, <laughs> what did she say? It was like, you know, but I want to be able to say, you know, I did that. I was wild. I fucking did it and i'm like oh it was such a great little scene there when she like finally just kind of gives her why mm -hmm. how like, kind of how it all broke down um so of course he like i said he he gives her own little adventure and we set up the whole boris and doris joke from the yes. from the intro her code name is doris and yeah. she'll be getting a call from boris yes yeah, so, yeah your contact whose name is boris and your code name natasha is doris <laughs> <laughs> i like that that's very good. <laughs> but before we can get to the Boris and Doris mission, we gotta we gotta interrogate Simon, or also known as Carlos. Yes, <laughs> the jackal, I believe it was, Who's, who pees on himself. Yes, he, multiple he pees. times in this movie. Mm -hmm. Would a terrorist pee himself? <laughs> uh, I like the part. Uh, so they're interrogating Simon over a uh, was it over a dam, like a dam, yeah. yeah. And of course, he's in a, he's in his underwear. They got him tied up. They're wearing the mask, and you know, you don't need to kill me. I haven't seen your face. And he pulls off the mask. Like, I didn't see your face. Hey, man, you still want the What's car? The car? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I'll give you a good deal. <laughs> uh, I also like uh, some of they. All right, you know, you guess you're not Carlos. You're not worth our time. They just kind of leave him in the middle of nowhere. But I like when he's like, "No, as soon as I turn my back, you guys didn't kill me." And again, Tom Arnold to the rescue. It was it. Fuck off, dipshit. Pack, 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 pack. <laughs> just <laughs> made him dance. Yeah, made him dance, just shooting down at his feet. That, that was pretty funny. So we uh, cut back to the house. We're at the kitchen. They're having dinner together or breakfast. I believe it is the following yeah. day. And she gets her. her yeah, she gets oh, her. Oh no, he asked her. Oh, it must you? have been scary last night. night that break. Yeah, your car breaking down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she's like shaking on coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So she gets her. Uh, she gets her Doris adventure. Kick off. She, she is to be a prostitute for some big time Paris guy, and she's supposed to go to the suite at the Marriott. And she's not, she's like, Am I going to have to, you know, do it? <laughs> do mm -mm. No, he just likes to watch. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it could be worse. It's only watching, right? Dress sexy, which is interesting when she initially wears that, the start of the dress with all the. Fluffing. Yeah, all the all the Tool. frill and the tooling around mm -hmm. the arms. Yes. I literally wrote down here my note is gets sexy. Yes. When she's ripping it off, it's obviously pre-ripped. You can tell. Mm. Because when she rips off this sleeve, this top right here actually breaks. It's already broken before she's able to yep. like pull it's it definitely, out. Definitely what I was paying attention to. Yes. And she pulls out <laughs> and she gets into this like skimpy little black dress that's part of the full dress. Mm -hmm. Takes the water from I'm pretty the... pretty sure there was a trampoline hidden in that dress. Yeah. Takes the water from the the, the, sh the flowers. Push yeah. it, does the hair. Pour out some moldy... Yeah. Moldy probably. <laughs> some moldy flower water and just run that through my locks. Mm -hmm. I don't have locks. And she I goes in. That's like. And prior to this... Her husband had one of his coworkers who has like a French accent do mm -hmm. like a recording of a of a script he wrote. Who needs this shit, Harry? Yeah, <laughs> who wrote this shit? I yeah. think it was <laughs> hard to tell through the accent. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so that's when we get to the the, the most well known, known scene of of this movie, where the sexy dance scene. He like makes her take off her dress, and she's in like this bra and high like waisted mm. thong Feel, kind yeah. of under. You would know better what to call that than I. I don't know, because it covered some of the butt cheek, but it didn't it didn't go like into the butt cheek. So we had partial cheek coverage? I think, yeah. I think they're like cheeky, high waisted. I was just looking for an excuse to say partial cheek coverage. I will say, I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis, great body, man. Great, like 
I don't see her attractive. I think she's a little masculine to and to me, especially her face. But killer body in this. Like well, some different folks, it. different strokes, not my yeah. pick. But hey, you do you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so. So, yeah, so we get the, uh, she gets into the sexy dance because, of course, her oh, mission. Oh, and she trips she had, in her heels, too. Yes, the, the falling in the, the falling off the bedpost was, of course, the, I like how again, you turn to me humor. and you go, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you mean? That's <laughs> me. <laughs> it was, you know, it was kind of mirrored the exact same level of, I guess I'd call it uh, coordination. Yes. <laughs> Yes. And You're both ballet dancers is what I'm saying. He eventually tells her to lay down and mm. he goes in, he's trying to be romantic with the flower and rub her nose and, and he'll smell it and, run and it go down her face for a and kiss. She, but she's like, absolutely not. Because she, she still doesn't know this is her husband. And then she clobbers him with a stainless, him. what looks to be a stainless steel based phone. Uh, yeah, phone from the 90s. Mm -hmm. So probably hurt just a little bit. Runs to put her dress on, heading out, he calls for her, finally sees that it's, it's uh, her husband. But also at this time, the bad guys have the Crimson Jihad have found them. Figured out where he is, and they invade, I guess, or they, like, they like break in, break to, take in. Him, to take him prisoner. Mm -hmm. And what I love about the scene is she thinks, she, yeah, because she's there for her mission. So she thinks she's the one being targeted. Like, yeah, let let me take charge. I know what's going on. He's like, ah, oh, come on, no, like I got this, guys. Just let the, let the hooker go, guys. Let the I hooker go. Cut yes. her loose. I got this. And uh, they get thrown into a plane, and it turns out it to be the art dealer. Oh, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. What? It was Tia Carrera the whole time. Mm -hmm. Fun fact, mm -hmm. she loved this role because she got to play a villain. Really? Mm -hmm. hmm, that's cool. Yeah, I feel like playing a villain would be a lot more fun than playing the hero. Well, I also feel like it's easy for certain individuals to either end up typecast based on, you know, whether it's previous their looks roles they've had stuff, or specifically yeah. their looks. Especially back in the 90s, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like I would enjoy playing a villain way more than playing a good guy. I mean, how would that be different from every day? What's that supposed to mean, Chris? It means you're a villain every day. You have a scream. You've got ghost face on your lapel. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well. We're villainous. You have a rogue pin. Look at it. It's, just, it's, it's all over. You can't take you anywhere. Like my little ghost? Mm -hmm. Go yeah. listen to the door. Okay. Get back Anyways, to the movie. Yep. <laughs> Our ADHD break brought to you by, hey, it's shiny. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're in the plane. She still thinks that uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Helen still thinks mm -hmm. she's the the one they want. And uh, Harry is like, no, let, you know, she's just a hooker, blah, blah, blah. But Helen does the mistake of pulling yes, the lock. This also felt like you. Yes, and opening it and showing the picture of the two of them before <laughs> yeah. she's drunk. Oh, if we're not married, then how did I, I get this? this? <laughs> let me get the head pop going. Gotta get let me know. Side. Yeah, let let's uh, blow your cover, Harry, for yeah. every single you know. Oh, the look villain. of the look of frustration on his face. When she ends up the Have you had that look of frustration? Oh, before, Chris? every husband, every husband knows that look well. <laughs> we hope our wives haven't seen it, but we know we've given it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they're taken to the Key West. Well, they're taken to a tropical island. We don't know it's the Keys yet. We don't know it's the Keys yet, but it's the Keys. Yeah, spoiler what, alert, it's, it's the, keys. the Keys. Yeah. Yes. Uh, where they're, again, interrogated. They use Harry to um, do a video yep. telling them that the Crimson has the Crimson Jihad is nuclear, nuclear power. powers and, you know. Yep, so they use recording. his spy background to verify the nuke and to verify to his wife that he is, in fact, a spy in. <laughs> Shatter that whole relationship. Before we get into that, yeah, I love the part where the guy holding the camera is recording. Battery says, "Yes, the leader," and he can tell the battery is about to go, but he doesn't want to say anything because he's scared. Well, 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 yeah, look at this. Yeah. You've got the leader of a terrorist organization. But in what's a worse? Fervor. What's worse? Saying, "Hey, hold on, I need to get a battery," or after an hour of him recording himself, and then he goes, "Did you get all that?" No, I got up until this point, but the battery went out. And then he get taken out by a seagull. Yeah. We'll get there. So we get almost one of our biggest action scenes at this location. Yes. Actually, I would say the big. Well, if, close enough. You know what, though? I mean, because towards the end, you get some you get some like vehicle action scenes and stuff. But really, like when this it comes to like, yeah, when it comes to like run and gun, when you think action, 90s film, what Schwar Schwarzenegger is going to be good for. This is like the big fight. 
And I love the fact that she's still gullible. She still doesn't think her husband is a spy or anything. She's struggling to... Until he's, until they go, what is this? And he's able to describe this nuclear bomb very easily. Well, I just like the very first... And the look on her face is just like the, realization. The that, first part where he goes, oh, I know. It's an espresso machine. Yes. <laughs> Wait, it's a snow cone maker. It does look like a snow cone. No. <laughs> is it a water heater? I mean... Kind of is. Yes. <laughs> it gets your water real hot. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so before they even break out, before we get to the action scene, don't forget you got the you have to break out from the interrogator. You got that creepy uh does, does that creepy thing with his voice. I don't know how he does that, but that creeped me out as a child. I think about that scene leading up to it every time because that scene terrified me as a kid. Oh, where he injected him with the truth serum. Yeah, and well then he's got his whole little plate of Torture uh, devices. Tor- yeah, torture yeah. In- implementation. Texturing it up, yeah. But I like how she gets to ask him some questions. She kind of gets to figure out their life a little bit better. Uh, by she, I'm, of course, referring to Helen, Jane, Helen, Jamie Lee Curtis. Finds and out he's been a spy for 17 years, they've but they've been, been married for 15, 15 years. Mm-hmm. That's a lot to take in, man. What, what, how would you feel if I was like, hey, Chris, I know we've been together 10 years, but I've been a spy for 12 I say it probably explains a lot. <laughs> so what's that supposed to mean? I don't know. <laughs> Internet, let me know down below in the comments. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, I, I imagine it'd be fairly upsetting. I mean, at what point? But what, then you find out you're just my cover. Dun, dun, dun. I mean. That I, could be a thought I, going I through I've her head. I cover this whole time. I know. This sure. Time. Yes. Of well, course. I mean, that's what Simon was going to use her for. Why should, why, why wouldn't she be covered? Yeah. Oh man. No, you didn't think that. Of that would be devastating. No, that's what I thought in my head when the scene was going on. When she realized the time span, she's like, holy shit, have I just been a a cover mm-hmm. or a pet to How him? Much uh, of, uh, ah! <laughs> a pet to him this whole time? Yeah, maybe just a little bit, unfortunately. Yeah. No. Yeah. Kidding. No, it's been a loving relationship, we come to find out. She asked him all the good questions, of course. The good terrorist uh I'm going to torture you, doctor. Shows back up. Harry explains, and one of my favorite. Again, I say this a lot. Another great scene in the movie. Very clearly explains. Oh, I thought I'd get out of here. And he's like, Oh, I'll figure it out. How are you going to do that? Well, I figured I'd kill you with that implementation on the table. No, no, and no. Then no, I no. killed his guard by doing this and doing what? It hit me. So he said, what he's going to do is use him as a human body shield. Sh- human right. shield. Uh, well, that guy shoots, and he's going to kill that guy with the instrument the on Allison the table. Troker. Yes. Yeah, right. And he's like, how are you going to do this? Well, I've already broken out of my cuffs. Yeah, well, he pulls <laughs> and it goes into hands. it. Yes. yes. <laughs> it was almost like a little bit of uh, the Robert Downey Sherlock Holmes movies. Yes. Kind of like how he explained his way through the fights. And um, yeah, so then we end up getting through that that whole action sequence where, again, we have very a scene that made me think, yep, that would be Nadia, which is they're, you know, they're slowly trying to make their way. It's before, right before the fight breaks out and, he has an Uzi and he's got a pistol. And of course he gives his wife the the Uzi and she, you know, b- battle ensues. She's kind of hidden upstairs and he's being overwhelmed and she decides to poke her head out to help and <laughs> fires like two rounds out of the Uzi and then proceeds to drop it because of the recoil. And then it hits the stairs and it fires off and manages to accidentally <laughs> kill like I a baker's to... dozen of terrorists as it spins down the stairs, firing off by accident. Machine gun stairs. <laughs> yep. Why would that be me? I'm a good shot. Are you? I mean, yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I okay. Am. So it wouldn't be her. Yeah. Never mind. I was yeah. wrong. She was yeah, right. it wouldn't be me. It would be you. Yep. It would definitely be me. She's, she's right. It would, yes. It would for sure be me. And uh, yeah, I just like that though. She gets like a little... Like little thumbs up, like, I oh, that would be me, yeah. yeah like, was, eh? like it was totally on purpose. I totally did it on purpose. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, there's just a there's, God, there's so many great little action piece, pieces to that whole sequence. But I'll just kind of run us ahead to the end to what I think is uh, I love when he exits the warehouse and he does the dual sweeping yes. Uzis. <laughs> like how nineties can you get an explosion and then jumps in the water too? Yeah, the slow motion explosion as yes. he dive, as he dives into the water to safety. Oh, before that, don't forget too. He does the flamethrower yes. using the diesel gas. Oh my god! Yes, and, and she looks on like, "Is this my husband? husband? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this man?" Oh, that was so great. 
And uh, Helen's actually kidnapped at this time again. Mm-hmm. And they think by Harry, Juno. And they think Harry's dead because of the explosion. Yep. And so we've got a nuke stain in Key West, and then we've got two of them on their way to New. Is it? No, that's not New York. That wouldn't be New York. Florida. It's the Keys. Oh, okay, whatever. Whatever city they're headed to. I can't sure, remember. There you go. Yeah, we've got two whatever trucks. City. Two trucks, I think, in the limo. Mm-hmm. Right? And there, yep, he hops in. He ends up, uh, Harry ends up getting picked up by Arnold. his team. Yep. They end up Albert. finding the, was it, was, they tracked him to the Keys because they had her purse. Yep, with the Ooh, little tracker in wasn't it. Wasn't that just a nice little... Good little, good little thing for the good team, for the good guys. They didn't have find my phone or find yeah, my find my friend. It was the iPhones, closest thing they yeah. had. Yeah. So uh, we've got we get a pretty cool aerial like mm-hmm. shot here because now we've got two jets coming in. We've got a couple helicopters. We've got uh, some missiles being fired. We've got a bridge being taken out. Pretty cool. I mean, I feel like this is where the budget was. <laughs> so the U.S. government supplied three Marine Harriers and their pilots for a fee of one hundred thousand seven hundred and thirty six dollars or two thousand four hundred and ten dollars per hour. That's pretty cheap Yeah, for, for a couple of for a movie pirates. budget. That's pretty cheap. Yeah, cheap actually. Actually. I mean, yeah. Of course, we're all stuck in ninety four. True. But Money. even for ninety four, that's pretty cheap. But you know what though? It, again, we're sitting here. We're talking. Uh, we're talking about the budget. the money here. We're talking budget exactly. This was the first film with a production budget over a hundred million dollars. Wow, nineteen ninety four. The first, first, numero uno. I can see that. I mean, well, there's a. I mean, James Cameron has his name attached to it. There's a lot of big explosion action sequences, Harrier jets. Um, lots Not of much locations. CGI. I, I can't. Well, I, mean, I cannot it's, it's pinpoint. It's a 90s action film where you're going to CGI this digital flame would probably be. I would say probably closest. when his daughter's like hanging, when they're hanging off of things and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I will say the stunt where, because obviously, okay, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's character's in the limo with Juno. She overtakes it. They shoot the driver. She's like trying to escape out of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, Arnold, he's trying to lower. The helicopter he's in to grab her. The hanging escape. And the bridge is taken out already because they've already shot down the two other trucks. And when they finally, he finally grabs her, that's a really cool shot because you could see, even if it's stunt people, mm-hmm. how the lifting how she's her up. Lifted, yeah. yeah, you can tell that. He doesn't pull her up so much as CGI. the CGI. So much as the car just drops away. Uh, stunt stunt. Scene. Yeah, I yeah. thought so too. Yeah. Yeah, that's that, pretty that cool. The whole thing's a great shot. Yeah. So uh, they also find out that the big bad has kidnapped his daughter during this time, That's too. That's right, because when they knocked him out, they looked through the wallet. They mm-hmm. saw, ooh, they have a daughter. Takes her to the nearest whatever building that they're in at the major city. Yeah, where they're getting ready to hold, you know. Kudos Crimson to Jihad this kid, Con. man. She sees him, like, turn the key to turn this nuke on, and she just steals it. I mean, her dad's a super spy. I know, but she doesn't know this at this point. It's in, it's in the genes. I, I would have been scared shitless. Oh, yeah. Of course you would. Yeah, it's the sand spider. <laughs> you know why they call him that? Because it's scary. Because it's probably because it sounds scary. <laughs> <laughs> so finish this up, Chris. So finish this up. So um, you know you have. They're heading to that big building. Yes, I can't think of um, the daughter's name. Uh, the actress, uh, Eliza, Eliza Dushku. Yeah. Eliza Dushku. Yeah. Um, who I had the fortune of meeting once a long time ago. I'm a very nice individual. Uh, she's Think you playing, make her mad or something? Well, I accidentally upset her. We can talk about it later. I don't want to ruin the vibe really bad. Because <laughs> it, it is a story and it is a vibe ruiner. So we'll hold, we'll hold off on that one. Okay. We'll get there. We'll get there if we feel like it. So um, she's taken hostage. Carrie finds out about it. So he does what any father who is also 007 would do and steals a Harrier. Uh, he flies to go find her where the hostages were. She's been taken hostage. And I love how you pointed out, because you know more about this stuff than I do, that jets don't take off like the, Well, because you need like a this, runway for the jet. Yeah, so they just detail, go, so, yes. and then go we're like that. So here they're you like, have thrusters that allow them to go straight. Exactly. They allow them to go straight <laughs> up. And then as I would say, because they don't need the runway, it's vertical to fuck your runway. <laughs> okay. So he flies off to go save her. Um, they're letting in the news team. You see that's the one guy from Harry's oh, team that sneaks was really in. cool, too. That's, yeah. That was Where he reaches little... out into the kids well, won't you, know what this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, ahead. okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Uh well, no, actually, because we're, we're we're skipping around. We're so so excited about this movie. Clearly, we're hopping all over the place. So she steals the key. 
he's coming up. It was during that point during the interview process because he wants to let the world know again because he didn't get his video done. Hey, yeah. Crimson Jihad's a nuclear power, guys. You need to make sure you know to take us very seriously. And so they get the news crew in there and say, you know, with one turn of that key, then the news reporter, like a dipshit, what key? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> You ruined this for everybody. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you're a reporter. You're doing your bit. You're, you're, you're asking the questions. I guess I, I can appreciate you doing your job to some extent. But uh, she takes off. As soon as she takes off, the guy who was the cameraman, which we found out was the other member of the of Harry's team. I think it's uh, Fasil. Fasil. It's F A. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce his name out of respect. That's the character's name. So I'm not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> but he has this really cool scene. So he is, this is back when we have, you know, cassette tapes. Recorders, for recording. yeah. So uh, he's got this big, giant camera. And of course, he's just like, they've hidden a gun like up in where the cassette That's would be so at. so cool. So he just like sneaks his hand up in there, just drops the camera, and just like one shot, three different terrorists, they all drop. And, whoa. That so, was really cool. Yeah, that was. It was it was a really smooth little like action sequence mm -hmm. and no wasted movement, no wasted time. And she's, of course, run up to the top of the building at this point, the daughter. And she's hanging now off hanging off, off, of, a off of a crane. And I'm not going to give you the key. Leave me alone. Get away from me. And he's trying I'll to I'll drop get her. it. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. Well, she should have just fucking dropped it, man. You know what, though? And that's what I said at first. But if she drops it, then she he has no reason to let her live. Yeah, that's true. So the key keeps her alive. So, of course, what do you do? You're stuck on the end of a crane. You have a terrorist who is coming to kill you, obviously. You thank Christ because your super spy Big dad Papa's here to shows save up you. in a hair ear. Right. <laughs> I like how it goes from dad in the beginning of this movie to this movie going, Daddy. <laughs> Daddy? Daddy, save me. Daddy. <laughs> well, I like I was like the part when uh when he shows back up in the hair ear because she's like, Dad? But then you get the terrorist does the does that double take, like <laughs> So uh, they drop down. She's holding. He shoots. Well, he shoots she, down at the Harrier. Yeah, breaking, she drops you know. in the front of it. Yeah, she's holding onto a bunch of broken glass, which I'm sure was very uncomfortable. Oh, I can't imagine. Yeah. So he like shoots the glass, and she like ran, like holds her hands on around her, like, the railing her of arms the around yeah. It. And it's like I'm sh very sure that that is not gonna feel good, but also probably gonna feel a lot better than falling like 35 stories or however high up they were. That's true. Little so, blood. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you end up with that last great action sequence. Arnold's in the Harrier. He blows out the level of a building that's full of terrorists. I forgot about this. Yes. He's trying to take down a helicopter that's got terrorists in it. They're shooting at him. And it makes like a little escape. He goes back to fighting the sand spider. You know, he ends up getting, you know, trust me, Dana, and does a, you know, she grips on tight yeah. and rolls the plane. And then of course he, he rolls falls onto, onto the a missile. missile. Yeah. Hanging and, off the missile. And then in true 90s fashion you know you're fired and then fires the terrorist missile at the with the terrorist yeah, on the, the terrorist missile on it. That's at what I mean the other terrorist at the terrorist through a building clear shot mm -hmm. to yep. make a omega sector victory yep that's exactly how it happens mm -hmm. in it, real life hey, he made the imf proud <laughs> so stupid <laughs> I mean, come on! This happens every no, day. Great, this is, uh, this is uh, yes. It's not stupid. This movie was uh, this movie's a lot I of fun. I mean it like oh, uh, it's it's hilarious. That's what I mean it by. Okay. So of course they shocker. He saves the day. The yes. family's reunited. We cut to a loving family having dinner together and having a great a time. Year, a year later. A year later, right? And you can actually see the difference in the family. Mm -hmm. uh, daughter's a little bit more involved with her parents. Jamie Lee Curtis, looks Helen more character, confident, looks more confident, more dresses nice, a little yeah. bit more confident to not the button up with the glasses, like the granny look that she was having at the first part of the movie. And Harry has growth by actually being there for dinner. Yep. Yep. And then it turns out that they both get called and on a mission. So Boris Jamie Lee Curtis, Helen has been, has joined the, the ranks. And James Cameron says, let's bookend this. Yes. So we go to another party. We have ourselves one last tango. Between the two of them. And Tom Arnold has been in the truck for 15 years. Next time you get to be in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> this movie was great. No, this whole this whole movie, there's there's it's shockingly longer than I like when we sat down to watch it, it was way longer than I remember. I thought this it was an hour almost, and a half. You you yeah, like, no, no, it's I, two I and like a half three hours. Movies, and for some reason I was it was late last night, it was like one in the morning. I'm like, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna watch the one movie we picked for today. I'm gonna throw out a couple and not even make the final decision. 
I misread it. I thought it was like an hour and a half, and it's a two and a half hour movie. We definitely still should do Stanley. We should do Stanley. Maybe that'll be one of our next ones that we do. For but, our listeners, Stanley. It's a horror <laughs> film, I believe. Chris was uh, at a job site and this guy tipped Chris. I did HVAC for like a month. Tipped him with the movie that he directed or starred in. He, I don't think he started. I think he worked on it in some or capacity. Or worked on it I think in he some might have way. been a producer or but something. Like t- and it's like an old, what is it? I think it was like 1973. It's about this guy who has a pet snake. And when. What is it? The It's like when he gets mad, Stanley, which is 1972. Snake, his rattlesnake gets angry or something. Like when he gets mad, Stanley gets angry. Tim has a pet rattlesnake. Deadly. When Tim gets mad, Stanley gets deadly. Stanley will make your skin crawl. <laughs> but apparently it's got good reviews. But well, hold on. I don't want to talk about okay, reviews okay. Stanley. But you're, you're I wanna, ahead. Yes, sorry. Go ahead. No, I want to hear what you, on a scale of, on, you, you like, you know, you always ask me on one to fives. I like one to 10 scales. It's my turn. One to 10? One to 10. Where do you rate this? How many lies out of 10 that are true? I, I think it's a solid nine, maybe an 8.5. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you with that. I think, well, I'm I'm biased because I've been watching this movie for forever. Like I said, this it, is one of my go-to sick movies. Yeah, so I, so for me, for a movie to be high past five, it has mm-hmm. to have rewatch value. And I feel this movie has rewatch value where you could put it on in the background you could play it at a party. This is TNT USA special. You yeah. have it on in the background. Nobody kind cares. Of, yeah, you can put it, it on. You can catch in, certain scenes. Out. You kind of figure out what's going on. So I would I would say it's a solid nine. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah. I think the uh, a lot of the action sequences, you know, come off as 90s action. But I mean, I think Absolutely. They, but they fun. They're fun. They still hold up over, yeah. over time. Like I said, I don't looking through the movie, realizing and mind you, we watched it on DVD format. I really didn't catch any. CGI. I mean, I'm sure there was CGI used for like the explosions with her hanging off the crane. I'm sure that backdrop mm. was CGI. I'm in. pretty sure I recall and I fact check me because I could be a thousand percent wrong. But when he first gets in the Harrier jet and he kind of, oh, it's like riding a bike. Uh, and he's kind of like drives it up. Mm-hmm. The, he's bouncing up and down and he drives it up the cop car. I think they made like a mock front like quarter of a Harrier jet. Oh. And that's what, so he's just like in a rig that is going up and up down. Up and down. Yeah. Okay. But I, but it doesn't catch me off guard. You know how some movies age a little too hard and you can, yeah. you can still prime example. But it was set current. That's, I think it's one of the things that helps. Yes, it is. Like Blade is a great movie, mm-hmm. but the CGI ages a little bit, but the story's so, so well done and, and the pacing and stuff you can kind of like forgive the CGI and you don't, it doesn't take you out of the story. Well, and that movie is so like the lighting is so dark and most of that. Movie, yeah, that's you can true. Hide some of the bad. And this is CGI definitely, definitely colored and shot like a James Cameron movie. Hey, listen, he is, uh, not my favorite individual. I think he's kind of a jerk, but he's made some good films in his life. And I Titanic, think, man, listen, true lies is my Titanic. That's true. Uh, Terminator. I'm listen. I've never seen any of the Terminators. None of them? None of them. Zero. Zero. Zero of them. Yes, I know. That's why I'm like, we should. Yeah. I, 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 don't I, know. I mean, I stopped after three, but that, that that's me. I think most people did. I mean, it's most where they should have. Yeah. We should we should watch that. That'd be a fun first watch for me. Maybe we should do one one, do one, two, and three as a uh Maybe. We'll see. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see. I think it was great. I I would rewatch this movie. I, again, I'm really surprised I've never seen it. Mm-hmm. Knowing the type of movies I grew up watching with my dad, I'm I'm gonna have to ask him if he's oh. ever seen and it. And like I'm said, sure he has. This is a TNT USA staple, so you'll yeah you know, you'll see these kinds of things all over the place. But I actually pulled up some fun little trivia here. I had to prepare okay. ahead of time. All right. So um, sorry I told you about the Roseanne Bar thing. Actually, the horse riding scene. Um, the horse actually got startled at one point and ran out of control, almost causing Schwarzenegger to die. <gasps> It was really? actually his. It was actually his stunt double horses that saved. That, you that don't fuck him. around with horses, man. I'm telling he, you. So it got out of control. He managed to slide off the horse, but did it near a 30 foot drop off. So I'm wondering if it was up on that rooftop scene for the jump. Yeah. It was probably you know obviously set and then higher. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, his personal stuntman saw what happened. Saw what happened. Was able to grab him before he went over the ledge. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. We wouldn't have had a lot of other Schwarzenegger movies. You know what my favorite Schwarzenegger movie Hit is? Me. Twins. I like to, it's funny. Danny DeVito, it's funny. I know, but this is It funny. is. I like it. It's enjoyable. Hey, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Did you know that his biggest challenge for Arnold wasn't doing the stunts? 
It was doing the tango. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did pretty well. So, yeah, he actually, I mean, for, especially for having to do it twice with the two different partners. Yeah. He took dancing lessons. He rehearsed the scene for six months. Wow. As he wanted to make sure he was as good as good at the tango as Al Pacino was in Scent of a Woman. That was that was his line. Scent of a Woman's it? a good movie. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I think if you're going to set yourself a like, I have to dance as good as in a movie, that's probably a pretty decent line to uh, set yourself there. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, and here we go. I didn't actually read this one. It just kind of came up to the top of the screen there. The scroll to kind of go with the question you asked me earlier. I, I haven't read this, so I have no idea where it's going. The set, I just saw the beginning of the sentence. The set of bra and matching panties worn by Helen Tasker during the striptease scene were Jamie Lee Curtis's own. Oh. Oh. Curtis rehearsed oh, the scene extensively. freak. <laughs> Curtis rehearsed the scene extensively with director James Cameron. And it was there that the fall she makes in the middle of the dance was conceived. It didn't happen spontaneously during the actual shooting, as is often claimed. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Schwarzenegger okay. was not told of this beforehand, and this is hinted at when Harry, Harry briefly sits up in alarm, realizes that he is breaking character, and then relaxes. <laughs> and I know exactly which part <laughs> of the scene he's talking about. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, you okay? The, right, well, and one of the other ones in here, too, is when he, uh, when he biffs it and drops the, uh, so startled, he yeah. drops the recorder. That was actually uh, a keep in that he wasn't supposed to drop it. He was just a, oh, oh, a little flustered. A little flustered. Hello. I would be too if Jamie Lee Curtis showed up in Curtis. that bra. Yeah, he said. To, yeah, like I said, to your career, loved it because she got to be a villain. James Cameron can be heard as the helicopter pilot who says, I didn't know that was James Cameron. She's got her head in his lap. Yahoo. That was James Cameron. <laughs> That's great. So yeah, I think all in all, if, you, if you've never seen this, it is. Uh, it's definitely a fun it's, watch. It's a great it's, watch. Yeah. It is. It is 90s rated R, but uh, it's kind of fun for everybody. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm glad we watched it. I'm, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, so if you, uh, if you got two and a half hours to burn, true lies. I also like the fact the whole time I was laughing on the couch. <laughs> oh, I mean, because it's definitely more of a comedy than a. I don't. It's not more of a maybe comedy a comedy than action. action film. It is more of an action film than a comedy film, but it's got those buddy cop elements in there. Yeah, I can see that. Tom Arnold. Keeping it real. Well, until next time. Boy, what you're telling me next timing? You don't want to tell people about? What? Oh, we went to go see Screamed here yeah. in Las Vegas, and it was the only time you liked Scream. Yes. I finally, I just wanted to make an update to the last video. We went and we saw a play. Yes, we saw Scream, the unauthorized musical, musical parody, parody. And I was really worried you weren't going to like it. And we went to go see it with you. okay. Matt. I was also really worried I wasn't going to like it. And you were just like in your jacket. You're like, okay. Like all right, I just got, and how you long actually is this? enjoyed I it. Sit through. So, yeah, no, it was it was a it was a good time. Mixed um, '90s pop music and scream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it was a parody of a parody of a parody. That's true. That's true. Ooh, that's real meta. Well, yeah. I mean, isn't that kind of the scream of it all? On that note, <laughs> thank you everybody for listening. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bells for all future episodes, including episodes on Dames and Dorks and our own live stream, Clickbait. Mm. That happens twice a month. And any last words, Chris? You're fired. Oh, okay. On that note. Sorry, that's a really bad one. See you later, folks. Bye, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>